Hey Chemistry, this is KJ here going over 1.03 Mass Mole Relationships. Again, have your periodic table and calculators ready. So let's review our term molar mass. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. Remember, molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. And how much of anything is a mole? Let's review that too. One mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. All right, so let's find the molar mass of four molecules of Be3, N2. And hopefully you can hit the pause button and do this one. But if not, that's okay too. I'm going to explain it. And so we knew that there was four copies. So we're going to multiply my whole answer by four because of the coefficient that there's four copies of Be. Now, Be, when we look at our periodic table, if I move over here, we have 9.0122, and we want to round everything to hundredths, so 9.01. So 9.01 grams for every one mole of Be. Okay, and how many atoms of Be are there in each molecule? There are three, so three times 9.01 grams per mole of beryllium plus, now we have to add in our nitrogen, and how many atoms of nitrogen are there? Two, and each nitrogen from looking at the periodic table is 14.01, again we round to hundredths, and there's two of them, so we put that all in our calculator, and don't forget that we multiplied this whole answer, once we got it, by 4. Why? Because it has a coefficient of a 4, which means there's five, four copies of it. And our answer is 220.20 grams per mole. Okay, so that would be our molar mass of that entire thing. Okay, so now we're going to convert moles to mass. We will use the molar mass of a substance to convert from how many moles to how many grams of the substance we have, or vice versa. So if I give you grams, which is the mass, remember the unit for mass is grams, then you have to convert to moles. All right, we will use the same rules as before. So how to set up chemistry math problems. Number one, write what you are given. Number two, make it a fraction by putting it over one. Number three, multiply the fraction where the top equals the bottom. And then again, the numerator is the same amount as the denominator, but the top and bottom have different units. So remember at the beginning we said 12 eggs is the same as one dozen eggs. The unit you started with must be the same as the unit that you put at the bottom of the next fraction, so they cancel. Use your rules of math to reduce and cross off units that are the same on top of a fraction as the bottom of the next fraction, and then multiply all the numerators, which are the top numbers and units, and then divide by all the denominators, which of course are the bottom numbers and units. So let's go ahead and do an example. How many moles are there in 2,000 grams of water? So think of a two liter bottle, like if you buy soda in two liter bottles, that's about how much water we're talking about because I'd like to give you some visuals on these. Otherwise, it's just all random numbers, and that doesn't really help you as much to learn it. So that's why I kind of want to do a few comparisons in these. So how many moles are there in 2,000 grams of water? So let's walk through the steps. If you think you know how to do it, go ahead and try it yourself. All right, so step one, write what we are given. Well, you started out with 2,000 grams of water. And our next step then, step number two, is to put it over one. So then we're going to add in our next fraction. So we're going to do times. And my mouse is acting a little bit funny here. Let's fix it. All right, then step three multiply by a fraction where the top equals the bottom, but they have different units. All right, well, what unit has to go down here? I have to do grams of water down here. And why does it have to be grams of water again? So that my units cancel out. 
And what am I changing to? What is my story problem asking for? It's asking for moles of water. And so in every one mole of water, how many grams of water is that? Well, H2O. So we look on our periodic table and we know that hydrogen, if we round to hundreds, is 1.01 .01, and oxygen is 16.00. So there are two hydrogens. So what we would put in our calculator then would be 2 times 1.01 .01 for the hydrogen plus the 16.00 for the oxygen. And of course, you would add that up to get 18.02. And so then you go ahead and multiply everything across the top. So on the top, we would end up with 2,000 moles of water. And on the bottom, we have to divide by 18.02. And when you put that into your calculator, you're going to get 109.89 moles of water. So in other words, if you have a 2 liter bottle full of water, you have almost 110 moles. So it's kind of a good way to think about it. And if I wanted to know ooh, how many particles that was, how many atoms that was, well, then I would do what we did before. I would say, let's start with what we know. So I know I have 109.89 moles of H2O. Step two, I'm going to make it a fraction by putting it over one. And for this one, I said, let's see how many atoms there are. So what unit has to go on the bottom of my fraction? Moles of H2O. And in every one mole, how many atoms are there? There are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And so if we put that in our calculator, the moles of H2 are going to cancel and we'll end up with atoms. So in a 2 liter bottle of water, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so we have that big number for every one mole, but we have 109.89 moles. So this would be our answer. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So it would be 6.62 times 10 to the 25th atoms. Atoms of H2O. If you get a two liter bottle of water, this is how many atoms are in it. So it's kind of cool if you think about it that way. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. All right, how many grams of table salt are in 40 moles of table salt? So if you think you're ready, hit pause and you can go ahead and do this one on your own. And if not, that's okay. We're gonna work on it together. Step one, what do you do first? Write down what you're given. Step two, you are going to put it over one. And what unit has to be on the bottom of my next fraction? Moles of NaCl, so that they cancel. And what are we converting to? What do we want for our final answer? We want grams of NaCl. So in every one mole, of NaCl, how many grams does that equal? Well, now we got to look on our periodic table. And each sodium, if we round to hundredths, is 22.99. So 
22.99. Any chlorine is, it's off the screen, hang on, 35.45. So 35.45. So 58.44 is the molar mass of sodium chloride. So 58.44. And then we're going to put that in our calculator, 58.44 times 40 equals 2,337.6. All right, so equals 2,337.60, because I always went to hundreds. What? What's my unit? Well... If we look, these canceled off, so the only thing I have left is grams of NaCl. Now, just so that you know, this many grams for 40 moles is about 5 pounds. So if you bought a 5 pound bag of salt, it has about 40 moles of table salt in it. So again, just trying to give you some ideas. And of course, this the mass and size of a mole depends on what chemical you're doing, but I at least wanted to show you a few common things. All right, how many moles are there in 150 grams of lithium sulfate? So hopefully you're ready to start one of these on your own. So give it a try, hit the pause button, and then check your answer. Because again, it's so much easier to say, oh yeah, I got this when I'm talking through, but harder to start on your own. Okay, so always start with what you're given. Step two, put it over one. Step three, what goes on the bottom of my next fraction? Grams of Li2S. And what am I converting to? What do I want my final unit to be? Moles of Li2S. And for every one mole, how many grams is that? Well, we look on our periodic table, and we have Li2. So we have two lithiums, and each lithium is 6.94, so times two, plus sulfur, which is 32.07, and the molar mass of lithium sulfide is 45.95. Ninety-five grams. Okay, so then put it in your calculator. You multiply across the top, divide by what's on the bottom, and so what we're going to put in our calculator is 150 divided by 45.95 gives us 3.26 what? Again, you always need your units in chemistry class. So it is that many moles of lithium sulfide. And that's your answer for that one. Okay, one more example in this lesson. This is as tough as it gets. If you can do this one on your own, you're good. You have no problems. So, how many grams of Al2SO43 or aluminum sulfate are in 11 moles of aluminum sulfate? So definitely hit the pause button. See if you can do this one on your own. And where do we start? Well, we start with what I gave you. So 11 moles of Al2, SO43, and oh, those have to be capital. Step two, put it over one. Step three, what goes on the bottom of my next fraction? What unit? Moles, Al2, SO43. And we're converting to what? So again, I don't even worry about any numbers to start with. I simply put down my units because from there, that guides me to tell me what my numbers are going to be. Okay, well, grams per mole. Oh, that's the molar mass. So in one mole, now I have to add up my elements that I have. So there you go. So we have sulfur, aluminum, and oxygen. And so we're going to add that.